Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolids at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 and we're going to start off this exhibition match stream with the match between El Terrero and Rar on Akalan Wastelands. So, this match is... Fair warning, it actually said it was no Elo, so I don't know if it's going to be a super silly match. We'll find out soon enough. Anyway, El Terrero is going to be starting out with Gunship Plant, while Rar is also starting with Gunship Plant. I'm curious what this is going to be trying to achieve, if they're going to be going for a gunship on gunship. I mean, obviously they are. But I'm just thinking, because gunships are... Gunships are definitely Rar's strength. They're one of the types of units that Rar uses all the time, especially on a large map like this. El Terrero, on the other hand, I've generally known to be a relatively flexible player, so I imagine they'll be doing fine here. And also, starting out with two Banshees right off the bat, while Rar, on the other hand, does not have any units at all. They're going straight for the Commander Morphs, which is pretty typically Rar. But they're going for Blast Wings, they're not going for Nats. I mean, I'm not, I'm not missing anything, am I? No, I'm not missing anything. They're not doing anything. They're, I mean, they're building up their economy, of course, and they have some, some missile turrets just in case. But at this point, they are playing heavy defensive, which is unusual for Rar. Rar is usually quite aggressive, sends out a Banshee right at the start, and then sends out loads more Banshees. So I'm not sure what they're trying to do here. Maybe going for a commander drop? I mean, if they're upgrading the commander two or three times, go for the commander drop on top of that. That could work, I suppose. It's it's apparently what they are going to go for, actually. They are indeed going for a commander drop, which, okay. I mean, that's that sounds like RAR. That sounds like a thing RAR would do. Risky strategy, though. But on this map, especially with El Torero going for gunships, that might be a really bad idea. Like, El Torero is going for gunships, so they're going to have cranes, they're going to have a lot of ways of rebuilding their base outside of their commander. Now, granted, if the Vindicator is not destroyed, then Rar's commander can just go around the map and has no... there's going to be no problems. El Torero is dead. But if that Vindicator dies, well, the commander's just out behind enemy lines and then El Torero kills it, and now that's done. There's nothing else to be said. That'll be it. So... That being said, Rar is still going to have a little while before that even comes up. We'll find out soon enough. Sheesh. It's going to take a little while for them to build up. Honestly, they've only gotten the second level, Beam Laser, and that's about it. Beam Laser, Nano Lathe. I mean, unless it's a Commander Nab. But usually that comes bundled with Nats. Rar would be building Nats right now if that were the case, and they're not. So given that, I'd say they're just going to be going for Commander Drop. Vindicator up, and are we going to see it? I don't think so. No, actually, wait, yes I do. What am I saying? The entire thing I was talking about before was this exact thing. But the question is, when are we going to see it? And I'm still not sure if that's... or when that's going to happen. Right now! Okay, there we go. This is the interesting thing right now. What is going to happen with Rar's Commander right now? Because Rar's Commander is pretty much the only thing going on right now. In El Torero's base, there's... Basically just economy, no real defenses, nothing at all. There's radar, there's nothing in terms of defenses. I mean, there's one crane outside of the base, which will probably try to start building around once they, once obviously shows up. Hey, wait a sec. Rar's going for a commander drop. El Torero will probably send out cranes to just deal with this. And Rapier's being built up too. Those were actually being built up beforehand. So that is the one thing that could cause problems. The other problem, I mean, Rar's not really upgraded their commander. But at the same time, they also do have... I mean, they haven't upgraded their commander, which means if they lose their commander, they don't lose as much. But it could be the case that the commander being more upgraded would do a better job for them, especially with the missile launcher. I mean, if they decided to stick on missile launchers or other... Oh, I guess light particle beam for anti-air. Mostly missile launcher. If they do that, then it would make life a lot easier with the rapiers, which apparently are not a concern. And yeah, this is going to be a problem. Wait, what the heck? What's causing the beam weapon? Oh, that's the Vindicator. Vindicator's an Archangel laser? Apparently. Yep, anti-air laser. Okay, it's not super strong, mind you. But still, it is giving Rar enough... It's giving Rar a position. They have a beachhead. And they aren't building anything else with it. I'm assuming they're going to be upgrading their commander with this. And actually, yeah, that's a good question. When did this thing get AA? That must have been really... I, I honestly don't see Vindicators up often enough. It might have had AA the whole time. Honestly, it's not one of those things that's super obvious. I could look it up, but right now, 
not the best time. In fact, it'd be a really hard thing to look up kind of thing because I have to look through all the change logs and everything. Just to double check, I... I would imagine if it is new, it must have been in the last patch or two. At the same time, though, RAR is craning up at the top. They have gotten a lot of expansion set up, so at this point, RAR, they have a backup if they need it. Like, if this commander thing goes bust, they have other ways out. Not that they're actually building up for them right now, and they could be upgrading the commander in the process, but yeah, there's other ways out. And at the same time, this is what I was talking about, El Torero moving their commander out of the way. They have the cranes as well to help build up a light vehicle factory. So right now, RAR may have... El Torero's main base pretty well locked down, but they don't have El Torero locked down. El Torero still has a lot of stuff on the map, so I'm imagining that's going to be quite important pretty soon. I mean, Live Eagle Factory coming up, that's... There's a lot, mostly Scorchers at this point, that just, that could just go up, deal with all these metal extractors if El Torero sees them, which I don't think they do. No, they have no idea. So if they did find them, if El Torero found RAR's metal extractors, then yeah, that could work. But RAR right now got rid of the gunship plant. Of course, the only problem is RAR is not aware of El Torero's base. They have no idea that El Torero has set up outside of their main base. I should say outside of El Torero's main base. They'd... RAR does not know any of this stuff. RAR, however, does have a lot to deal with this. They are... Oh, they are building up. Okay, getting rapier support. On top of all the... All of this. Speed on top of auto repair, so that commander... Still more of an economy commander than anything else, but honestly, it's working out pretty well. Being an economy commander means that this whole thing here... I mean, that's 15 metal per second on top of whatever RAR is going to do to it. I mean, that's 25 metal per second they could add in that way. Although, I don't think that's going to happen. Honestly, where's the energy to support that? There's no energy... 17 energy on 23 metal. At this point, that's reclaim that will probably be wasted. Of course, that's assuming there's no additional power plants, and instead, it will be, in fact, a shieldbot factory being built up. Which, okay. I mean, if you're right in the middle of your opponent's base, that actually makes a lot of sense, because shieldbots, while slow, don't really care about speed when they're right there. However, at the same time, El Torero going for a counterattack, and not much in RAR's base to deal with a counterattack right now, so El Torero could very well get rid of RAR's energy economy completely. That's the biggest threat. And the Rapier's coming in. Both defend the defenders were completely just removed of ammo thanks to that Banshee. That was a really good move by El Torero. Get rid of the defender ammo first, then rush into the Rapiers, although unfortunately still forced to retreat somewhat. Getting out of the way of the Lotuses before turning around, and those Rapiers in the back need to stay in the back. It's the one thing, I mean, if El Torero loses those Rapiers... Actually, at this point, the advantage is almost lost. El Torero has very little to work with right now. What the heck? Anyway, there's a clan symbol over in the corner. One of these commanders has lost a clan symbol in the ocean. Might want to pick that up. That, I think, is considered littering. So anyway, El Torero, like I said, they have the cranes, they have the ways out. They can easily build up, and they are. They've got most of the south side of the map taken. So at this point, El Torero and RAR are pretty even when it comes to their, their hidden economy, hidden expansions. Unfortunately for El Torero, or for RAR, El Torero about to... Tr well, are they going to fly by? No, it looks like the path is going to be a bit below the mountains, but they might see it. The Rapiers... Oh man, this is actually really... I think they did! I think... No, they are going to see it, because they are going to run right through here. And yeah, El Torero just about to spot RAR's hidden expansion. And there we go. RAR about to lose the hidden expansion, which honestly was pretty much keeping them afloat. Although at this point, RAR does have their entire hidden... Or not hidden, but they've taken over El Torero's base. It's one-way base trade. Base steel, I suppose. That's kind of what a one-way trade is. It is theft. If anyone offers you a one-way trade, remember that. They're actually stealing from you. I'd recommend avoiding it. Do what you will, but I'd recommend avoiding being robbed from. If you can, if you can avoid it. At this point, though, El Torero just trying to keep RAR basically pinned down in El Torero's own main base. Or old main base. Okay, Sprung pointing out the Vindicator AA laser with two years ago. It's just that no one ever uses Vindicator, so nobody knew when the Vindicator laser popped up. Thank you, Sprung. That'll help a lot. And anyway, to the top, I mean, we do see that El Torero has pretty much torn apart RAR's economy. RAR is pretty much pinned down here. Felon's going to come out and try to help, but between the Stinger and all these Wolverines, 
Actually, more so the Ravager. The Wolverines are going to be countered by the Felon, but the Ravager is where the problem comes in because, of course, all that health. And El Torero's commander is pretty well upgraded, too. Level 3 commander, just like Rar's. Oops. It's just like Rar's. Everything's just like... like really, Rar has no real advantage here. If anything, El Torero has the advantage just thanks to those cranes. This is exactly what I was talking about. El Torero just got everything built up. Their contingency built up. Life vehicle plant built up. Honestly, Rar... In taking over El Torero's main base, has pretty much set themselves up in a prison. Rather ironically. It's like the defensibility of these main bases is now being used against RAR. Because El Torero is built up right outside of it. But RAR didn't really have a chance to build up. They had a beachhead, but they didn't get the they weren't able to secure the ramp. So basically they're pinned down. They're locked in. Which is rather amusing. However, RAR is not dead. They're just not in a great position right now. Backup forces are coming in. Cavalry is coming in for RAR. Rapiers and Tridents coming in. Try to get rid of El Torero's Air Force. With that gun, that'll probably help out. But honestly, I don't really think it's a problem. I mean, RAR has not been really having to deal with air too much recently. El Torero also getting cloaking. Oh, I didn't. I missed that. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but at the same time, that could be. See, it's disintegrating you. Oh, yeah, they could walk up and degun there. That's a walk and ultimatum right there. If El Torero wants to, I mean, they could pretty much just walk up to Rar's commander. I think the disintegrator gun is 8,000 damage. No, it's only 1,400 damage. Never mind. Could wipe out the Thug Ball, though. If the Thug Ball gets big, then El Torero, El Torero has an answer to that. Of course, at the same time... Here's the thing. RAR getting rid of El Torero's air force while El Torero has no way of rebuilding it means that it's a lot easier for RAR to rebuild their economy and then, as a result, take the game back and also to harass El Torero's economy as they're doing right now. But yeah, this this thug felon ball is probably going to get torn to shreds by El Torero's cloaked D-gun. And I don't think RAR is even aware that El Torero has a cloaked D-gun available. I think, at this point, it's not there. Oh, there's a multiplier for units that I sprung. Thank you. It's not clear from here. Actually, not here. It's on the other one. It's not clear from here that it does more damage to larger targets. Oh, it does. Never mind. Damage increase versus large units. Wouldn't... I don't know if the commander counts as a large unit, though. Regardless, the thug ball's dead. Like, as soon as the degun fire happens, which should be about now. Why is the degun not firing? Are you paying attention? There we go. Okay. Got rid of the thug ball. Looks like possibly the cost of the commander's life, though. Yeah, that, that commander's down. 81, 45. Ah, it's gone right in the middle of that wall, too. Not enough to really put a dent in it, and RAR all's losing their commander. But I think RAR actually has managed to take this. With the commanders both down, all that's left is RAR's production, and El Torero's production has pretty much ceased. Oh. Khan wasn't obeying orders. Oh, I see. They're probably trying to degun everything. And probably frantically hammering the D-gun button and nothing worked. That's really annoying. That's... Oh, man, I hate when that happens. That's probably one of the most annoying things about this game is that whenever anything goes wrong, it goes wrong so quickly that it just... Everything breaks apart. Like, there's any small problem, any small error in terms of... In terms of unit behavior or in terms of commands, in terms of lag, it... Explodes, explodes massively very rapidly just because the game is so fast. Any small problem will basically mean a unit dead or an army dead. It's a bit of a problem. Oh, I see. It was oh, that's what it was HMG didn't hold fire. Yeah, actually, it, yeah, coming out holding fire. That would explain why not obeying orders. Yeah, that's. Oh man, that's so annoying. That would explain why there was a recent forum thread about how to get cloaked units to automatically hold fire. Because this game happened, I believe, a week ago. Let's see. No, three days ago. Never mind. Happened a few days ago. And that that's about the time frame. Which is when I was on vacation. And in case you're wondering, I didn't do especially well. I went 1-0 in Skullgirls. And that was only because of a disqualification. So I technically lost all the games I actually played. Not great, but I did learn a lot of stuff that'll hopefully help in Chicago coming in in May. Outside of that, I don't know. It was I learned a lot of stuff, made either made more friends or 
got to catch up with old friends, that sort of thing. So it was good socially, and I learned a lot about Skullgirls. Didn't learn a lot about Guilty Gear, mind you. That, that was kind of a bust. Anyway, that aside, next game is going to be between... North Chilean G and Snugglebase on Lonely Oasis, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment. <laughs> 